Hi guys, I am so excited that today we get to start life sciences in our eighth grade science series. We're gonna start off with um, photosynthesis and cellular respiration. So awesome topics like that. Let's do it, science rocks. All right, open up your science notebook. You might um, add a new section. We have been talking about physical science topics, and today we're going to start a life science topic. So take notes, draw pictures as you follow along. Go ahead and copy down these 11 only vocab words. They go in ABC order like this. So just come back later and create your own definition of these words. So remember to always use your own words and draw pictures. Go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing down the vocab words. All right, so all living organisms need food. Some can make their own food, okay? Others have to eat other organisms to get food. So plants make their own food using air, water, and sunlight through something called photosynthesis that we will get to talk about today. So food is a source of chemical energy. It also contains many nutrients that organisms use to build their muscles and other tissues. The sugars produced by plants during photosynthesis are used by the plants for energy and growth. They are also a good source of food for many other organisms. So there are two stages to the process in which animals can use food to get energy and nutrients they need. These steps are digestion and cellular respiration. All right, digestion, organisms that eat plants or other animals must first break down their food into its smallest parts before they can use the energy in that food. All right, and then cellular respiration. Digestion breaks down many foods such as starches into sugars. Cells use a chemical reaction called oxidation to break down the sugars even more. The oxidation releases the energy stored in the sugar and makes it useful. This process is called cellular respiration. So both plants and animals use the process of cellular respiration to release energy from those sugars. All right, photosynthesis. You guys should get on YouTube sometime and type in photosynthesis rap. And there's one by... I think it's called Rhyme, Rhythm, and Results, where it's like photosynthesis. Let's get into this. Anyway, watch that. It might help you memorize um, some of this photosynthesis stuff. So let's talk about it. Plants. Plants contain small structures inside their cells called chloroplasts, okay? And these chloroplasts contain something called chlorophyll. I think they're filled with chlorophyll, all right? Chlorophyll is a green pigment that absorbs some colors of light energy but reflects green light. So the presence of chlorophyll is what makes most plant leaves look green to people, all right? Uh, so plants and other organisms with chlorophyll make their own food through this process of photosynthesis. So plants get water by absorbing it through their roots. They get carbon dioxide by taking it in through these little tiny holes in the plant's leaves and stem. Remember that we, as people, we breathe out carbon dioxide, so the plants are taking it in. And then plants get energy from the sun when sunlight falls onto the plant's leaves, okay, and that is absorbed by um, chlorophyll in the plants, all right? And sugar is made during this process. Sugar is also um, a specific form of sugar. It's called glucose, all right? And so after that, carbon dioxide is added to the water and added to the sunlight. It produces or yields sugar for the plant, so that glucose, plus oxygen. It releases oxygen, which y'all, what do we breathe in? Oxygen, so thank you plants. 
All right, so cellular respiration. If you look at the equation for it, what do you notice? Hmm, it's the flip-flop of photosynthesis. Remember, photosynthesis produced glucose and oxygen. And remember, photosynthesis started off with carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So it's the flip-flop. All living organisms, including all plants and animals, perform some sort of cellular respiration. So during one type of cellular respiration, oxygen reacts with glucose sugar to produce or to yield carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So all plant and animal cells require oxygen for cellular respiration to happen. And during cellular respiration, food molecules, like glucose, are being broken down. All right, this shows how the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration work together. All right, this means that the chemical products of photosynthesis are the chemical starting materials for cellular respiration, all right? And the products of cellular respiration are the starting materials of photosynthesis. So if we start up here at the sunlight, all right, it's being absorbed by this plant, um, which also needs water and carbon dioxide, we know. So then we have photosynthesis, all right? So if all the sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide is absorbed by the plant, then it'll produce glucose, remember the sugar, and oxygen so we can breathe, all right? So cellular respiration starts off, it needs glucose and oxygen, which is a product of photosynthesis, but it's a reactant. It needs that to start cellular respiration, okay? So it takes the glucose and oxygen, and it produces, through cellular respiration, water and carbon dioxide and some energy, okay? So it produces these reactants that are needed for photosynthesis. So it's a little happy cycle. All right, make sure to take a look at these two videos talking more about photosynthesis and cell respiration. Okie doke, practice question time. Number one, how do animals get energy from food? How do animals get the energy from food? So look over your answer choices, pause this, and see what you think. All right, so animals are able to change the chemical energy in food into energy for their bodies. So when food is digested, it is broken down into simpler molecules. So these molecules enter the bloodstream and travel to the cells. And in the cells, during a process known as cellular respiration, Molecules from food are oxidized. They react with um, oxygen. Remember, cellular respiration um, has the sugar plus the oxygen. So they react with the oxygen and then release energy. So some of the energy that is released is in the form of heat energy. So if we look at our answer choices, we're going to go with D. All right, number two, an ecologist studied the same species of deer during the summer and during the winter. She noticed that during the summer, when there was plenty of food, the deer were energetic and playful. However, during the winter, when food was scarce, the deer moved more slowly and did not run unless they needed to escape a predator. So, which scientific fact is best supported by her observations. So pause this and see what you think. All right, so the ecologist observed the energy levels of the deer. She thought that they were more active when they had plenty of food. So these observations support the idea that food is the fuel that gives animals energy. So that goes with D. Number three, a scientist did an experiment using a chemical inhibitor that stops photosynthesis for a certain type of plant. He grew two plants, giving the chemical to one plant and not 
to the other. Both plants were given equal amounts of water and sunlight. He then measured the growth of both plants as shown in this table. Okay, why did the plant that could not photosynthesize stop growing? All right, so we've got the date here. We've got the height of the controlled plant. All right, the controlled plant in centimeters. And then we've got the height of the treated with the chemical inhibitor in centimeters. Okay, so this is the one that he gave the chemical to that inhibited or stopped photosynthesis. And this is the control plant. He did not give that chemical inhibitor to that apparently stops photosynthesis. Okay, so pause this and see what you think. All right, so food provides molecules that serve as building materials that all organisms use to grow, right? So plants use photosynthesis to make this food, all right, this glucose, this sugar. So in the experiment, the scientists stopped one plant, all right, this one, from being able to make its own food, all right? So the plant that could not grow... Uh, because it did not have enough food for the building materials. Okay, so why did the plant that could not photosynthesize stop growing? Look, this one kept growing in centimeters. It went from 8.3 centimeters on June 5th to 9.6 centimeters on June 11th. This is the one that was still doing photosynthesis. It was still able to grow. This is the plant that they gave the chemical inhibitor to that stopped photosynthesis. And on June 5th, it was 8.6 centimeters tall. And on June 11th, it was 8.7 centimeters tall. So it stopped growing. Okay, so it did not have enough food for building materials. Number four, this diagram represents the inputs, the inputs and the outputs of cellular respiration. Okay, so here's an animal cell and in red, it's showing what's needed for cellular respiration to occur in the three things that are produced after cellular respiration. So the arrows entering the cell are called the inputs and the arrows exiting the cell are called the outputs. So what is the missing input right here? And what is the missing output right here? Okay, it says for cellular respiration to happen, it needs glucose and what else? Okay, and for cellular respiration, its products are, it produces water, energy, and something else. So pause it and see what you come up with. Okay, so if we remember photosynthesis and cellular respiration, photosynthesis produces glucose and oxygen so it can be used in cellular respiration. Okay. So a cell uses that glucose and oxygen, and through cellular respiration, it produces water, energy, and then what do we breathe out? <sighs> Carbon dioxide, CO2. Okay, so we're going to go with A. Cellular respiration needs glucose and oxygen, and it produces water, energy, and carbon dioxide. Last one, number five, plants and animals need energy in order to survive. Which of the following statements about the conversion of food energy into other forms of energy is true? So pause this, read it over, and see what you think. All right, so plant and animal cells require oxygen to properly break down food molecules. So B, the process of breaking down food molecules in plants and animals is a type of reaction called oxidation. Okay, remember you needed the sugar or the glucose plus oxygen to do cellular respiration. Okay, glucose plus oxygen can produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. So food oxidation, also called aerobic respiration, takes place in the organelle called the mitochondria. 
After you have fully mastered photosynthesis and cellular respiration, everything about biochemical reactions, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, or an experiment explaining all of this to your teacher. So good luck and remember, science rocks.